Hey ho, let's go. Happy Victory Monday, everyone. Just so I can say that this year. Hope you are well wherever you are. Hi, as always, I'm Sean Pugsley Martin. This is episode 35 of Pugsley's Pit. And as we always do at this time of the show, we ask you where ask you the question, where else would you rather be than right here? Right now. By way of introduction, I'm a freelance sports writer with the Albany Times Union, an avid sport that's enthusiast. The misery is over. We finally won some games this weekend. A big time homer for my sports teams without apologies and a, and a, and a massive coffee lover. So the coffee tastes real good today with the, with the Huskers getting a big win and the Raiders getting on the board. Yeah, hey, we'll get into that in my world segment uh, coming up a little bit later, but Victory Monday is sweet. But as you did during the dark times, the first four weeks of the college football and NFL season, three weeks of the NFL, uh, continue to send beer. I'm, I'm good with that. You help me through the misery, but uh, keep it coming. It, it helps, as, as you know, you never mess with a streak. So here we go. We're in a much better frame of mind than the last few weeks. On today's show, we're a couple days away from the beginning of the Major League Baseball playoffs. We're going to get away from the NFL for a little bit, although we'll touch on it later uh, in the show. Uh, we're going to look back on the season. Uh, we're kind of getting the band back together a little bit today um, from the old uh, Eminem and M&M Across the Board podcast. Uh, we're going to look back on our season uh, and the postseason with an old friend, Mr. Eric McDowell, uh, from the podcast. And uh, Eric, how you been? Good to see you, Sean. Nice to see you smiling on this Monday. You were two and zero. It's just, oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and and you beat Denver too, because oh yes, that's true. You know, yeah. Still, McDaniel's was supposed to come in and help that red zone. There were still too many field goals yesterday, but uh, and I really the toughest part of the day was powering through Kevin Harlan on the broadcast because he is just <laughs> he's the second worst announcer in football next to Mike Tirico. You know, three yard run uh, off tackle, and he makes it sound like John Riggins just broke a forty yard yeah, touchdown. Exactly. The field. It's just like, dude, slow down. Not every play is the greatest play. Have radio with that voice. Yeah, he just annoys me. So the mute button gets a workout. But hey, let's uh, let's look back at MLB. You got just a couple games left. Playoff positions pretty close. Nice, very nice coffee mug. I'm with my. It's now worth. Uh, Two ninety nine on eBay. If yeah, we right. Well, they're collectors. I there's only three in right. existence. That's right. So yeah, I might be able to fetch a cool million for that. But hey, preseason predictions. Actually, we'll get the preseason predictions in a little bit. A couple of things I marvel over is the Otani for MVP campaign this year. He's versatile. He's great. He's a talent we've never seen. I get that. That doesn't make him the MVP every year. Uh, not with the year judges had, but also one of the most intriguing postseason awards coming up. I'm expecting Terry Francona to get manager of the year, but how does Brandon Hyde and Baltimore not get it? A Brandon Hyde case closed, I think. Yeah. And and to touch on Cleveland, Francona is a Hall of Fame manager, and, and the fact that he misses games and they rally around him, the guy has done an incredible job in Cleveland. Uh, the pitching, you know, Tristan McKenzie joining Bieber. Tristan looks like uh, uh, thinner Pedro, if that's possible. And and the fact they lose, you know, Fran Mil Reyes, uh, a guy who should have hit 30 and 100 this year. He couldn't hit anything. He was he killed my fantasy oh, team, too. He's on the never yeah. again list. And, and I had him as my DH, too. But a mad Rosario. It's just remarkable what Francona has done. No question. And he can't get yelled at or, or disrespected because, oh, the White Sox should have won it. The Twins fell apart. I don't care. And the Tigers had the worst season of anybody yeah. that we thought they'd be in it. So I get Francona, no question. But what Brandon Hyde did, and then you trade your heart and soul, Sean, and Mancini at the deadline. And, and your closer. Go, and your and closer. closer. And you still get down to the final weekend. And then you go to New York and win after eliminated. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful for the great fans of Baltimore. Uh, they deserve that, and hopefully a new owner uh, pretty soon will pump some more into that good young ball club. How about Mountcastle, too? Yeah. Just a great young uh, great young team and a wonderful story in Brandon Hyde. Yeah, and other guys, like 
Gunnar Henderson, I, I have him on my fantasy league. By the way, first time in 33 years I'm going to finish last. Oh. I've never finished. Oh, it's, it just sucks. But I got a, a good base, good young players. We keep five guys, and Gunnar Henderson is uh, going to be on that list. But anyway, let's and get Rushman. back to the How season. Him? What's that? The catcher. Absolutely. Oh, the kid had over 30 doubles. He got called up like in May. Yeah. I mean, he's going to be their best catcher. He's going to be better than Weeders. They've got right now such a tremendous core. No question. Yeah. All right, look, we have we have a third person in the booth today. The band is oh. officially back together. Hi, Eric. Hi. Good I to see you. I did the same you. thing. <laughs> I did the same thing when I was on. Like Sean, you? there's only three in the whole world, and they're all on this podcast. Isn't you know that? it. How before we're talking baseball, but I gotta ask you, the orange five and oh. What's going Rocking on? It. Are you guys in uh, football school? You're a football school. Well, no. Um, we are not a football school. We once were in the 80s, we were, but uh yeah, listen, it's been fun. I keep telling people. Just relax. It's all going to come back down to earth. And I'm not like the most negative person, but listen, we've got NC State next week. Then we've got to buy Clemson, Notre Dame, Florida State, Wake Forest. Like four of those five teams are ranked in the top 25 right now. The ACC is no cakewalk this year. This is a better team, but we're closer to a five. We'll end up closer to a 500 team than a five and O team. Don't just be happy you don't have the Huskers on the schedule. You don't want any part of our smoke. Right no. Now. You know what? I would take the Huskers. We went, might have a chance to beat them. No. Huskers, first team ever. Write this down. Get your pencils. First team to ever make the college football playoffs with three losses. Write that down. Get out of here. Anyway, Ashley, thanks for, thanks for hopping in. You're just at the point where I'm going to ask Eric, before we get to the postseason and our predictions, Eric, Red Sox, last place. I might have said that. Mm. No, I said fourth. They gave him the benefit of the doubt over ball. You, right. you, yes, you had them. I'm peeking it. I'm glad we're all here because there were some great comments back then. <laughs> we all had Toronto. Uh, I had the, uh, you had the Yankees fourth. Ashley agreed that the Yankees would be fourth with me. And then, and Sean had said, Sox are worse than third place. So I'll give you that one. Yes. Um, yeah, look, we, we all had Toronto yeah. in the World Series. You two had LA, I had San Diego. I'm going to blame that on Tatis. But what uh, what what happened in the last few months that, that we did or did not see coming? Well, Ashley, before I just want to say the best division for all of us was the AL West. Sean had that division for description he picked houston he said a lot of good things are going on in seattle i said yep. give some love to seattle you said i'd love to see the drought end so i think we all nailed the al west yeah you know? listen playoff expansion helps this cause right i and it you kind of got to talk about it is seattle in if we don't have playoff expansion i don't know maybe toronto or the rays aren't in either but someone benefits at the end of the day and the scene in seattle was so cool like to hit a walk off, yeah. to send you to the playoffs, to break the drought, unbelievable stuff. So yeah, I think that's a. I mean, that's a great situation, and I'm not sure there are a lot of teams who want to play that team in particular. They've added Castillo, they've got a ton of talent, and that's a team that is playing like it has nothing to lose because they really don't. Yeah, you got Castillo, who's been great, and just mm -hmm. signed his contract. Robbie Ray has had a, a picked it up. The second half there, George Kirby's a great rookie, and, and Logan Gilbert's a really good uh, young pitcher. So, yeah, they, they got it covered on the mound. Um, yeah. uh, we'll see about that. But what uh, what uh, I was going to ask you about with Seattle, what about Ashley? We were talking about Cleveland a few minutes ago and the job Francona has done there. I, I, I think they're going to beat Tampa. I think Tampa's just kind of limping in here a little bit. Um, but what about the job Francona and, and we're talking about Brandon Hyde too in Baltimore and what, what they did this year? Yeah, I think, so this is an interesting team to me. I think people started to honestly pay attention early on in the season. And we talked about the emergence of a guy like Stephen Kwan and how he drew attention to this team and showed that they have young talent. 
young talent that is exciting, that got people talking about the Guardians again, that got Guardians fans in Cleveland excited again. And they really haven't stopped. They've just gotten better as the season's gone on. And I think that division underachieved, which helped them also. But they're a really interesting team. And another team that I might not – I don't know that they're going to beat the Rays, but I I think they'll give them a run for their money. I I got uh, the guy I want to mention too, Ahmad Rosario. Now, over a year ago, there was talk, you may remember, that the the – then Indians might be moved. Mm -hmm. There was talk that they may move that franchise, which to me would be like moving the Pirates. Okay, yeah, you can. Tradition there. But yet they made a financial commitment to Ramirez. They locked him up, and it sent a message to the fan base in the clubhouse. And I I agree with you and Quan, and I think it sent a great message, and it fired that club up, and they rallied around Terry during his illness. It's a wonderful story. The other thing I want to touch on, you mentioned Seattle. Um, uh, the Suarez Castillo trade could be one of the best pickups for a team, probably in Seattle's franchise history, because the Reds should get a playoff cut for that deal. Mm-hmm. And congrats, if you want to call it, to the Sacramento Kings. They now own the longest playoff drought in pro sports at 16 years among major league cities, although I don't think Sacramento is a major league city. Go easy. There you go easy on. So now it's Kevin Herter's turn to snap the longest streak in the NBA and all of Major League Sports. Ashley, good call. Bobby Witt, AL Rookie of the Year. I like that. Um, And the the other thing I want to talk about, Eric, you had Albert could get his 700th going out, uh, 700th going out with Molina and Wainwright, which is exactly what they did yesterday. Um, What a great move for for the Cardinal organization to to kind of do it that way. What did you guys think of that? I, I was thrilled. I, I I really thought Albert would have a shot. I saw some clown yesterday say, "Oh, it's steroids." It's like, don't come on. All right, that's for Albert, everything as pure as it could be, uh, a remarkable career. There were no doubts. He got it done, as Frank would say, my way. And thank you to the Universal DH because it got mm-hmm. him the at bats, and that is exactly where he should be. But uh, we'll never see a catcher pitcher uh, matchup like we've seen. And they've seen in Wainwright and Molina. I don't think you'll ever see that again. You had to go back to the Tigers. Feels like St. Louis is the only city that can take a couple of 40-year-olds and get the maximum out of them. Like, no other team on the planet has one, let alone three guys, who have just the longevity. They've defied all odds when it comes to age. Wainwright, Molina, and Albert Pujols. But... What they did last night reminded me of when the Yankees sent out, was it Jeter and Pettit to go get Mo? Or, uh, or Posada. Was, yeah. yeah, yeah, to go get Mo. It was like that was the same feeling when all three of those guys what kind of converged on the mound and then walked off together yeah. to a standing ovation. Like it doesn't get any better than that. That's what makes baseball so great is that you can kind of script moments like that. And if you're a manager, you can allow things like that to happen. They're already in the playoffs. You can arrange things like it's just so cool. Yeah, it was. Hey, Eric, real quick, Judge and Otani, MVP. I think Ashley and I covered this pretty good a couple weeks ago when she was on. What are your thoughts there? And, yes, I'm going to make you say good things about a Yankee. This is why many people think they should be a most outstanding player. You go back to Ernie Banks, okay, who had MVP numbers with the Cubs when they stunk. And that's when people talk about a most outstanding player. And that is where an Otani could win that. Uh, it is beyond belief that a player that Ashley, of course, and Chris got to see in person, you'll tell your great grandkids about that mm-hmm. because of what he's done in the leaderboard in both pitching and hitting. And I throw again my Sox hat away as a baseball fan. Judge is the most valuable player on that team. They relied on him during that slump that everybody has during a long season, and he stayed healthy. And we all said at the start of the year, if healthy, well, he was healthy. And he is the face of the franchise. I don't care if they throw $500 million at him. He belongs someday in a plaque with the other legends with that franchise. And he has put together, I think, one of the most outstanding offensive seasons in baseball history. I'm serious. Yeah, listen, I- I've said this. If it was just about the home runs, that's different. But this right. is a guy who still has the potential – 
and maybe not as much after an 0 three night the other day, but still has the potential to win the triple crown. So it's not like he's not, yeah. he's doing it all. And, yeah. and you're right. The Yankees are not winning the division and maybe they're not in the playoffs if they don't have that guy hitting lead off for them. Yeah. Speaking of the Yanks, let's start the playoffs. What, Ashley, what kind of shape are the Yankees uh, at heading in here? Um, I feel pretty good about them. I feel I feel good about their lineup um, because they're getting pieces back at the right time. They've mm-hmm. added DJ LeMayhew back. They're bringing a guy like Matt Carpenter back. They're bringing pieces back, and the guys that they have are getting hot at the right time. Like I, I'm not worried about Judge, but Glaber Torres has been as good as he's been all season. Aaron Hicks has finally started to hit. So if things like this start to happen at the right time, I feel really good about their lineup. And the lineup is what I've been concerned about most generally when we get to the playoffs because they tend to get shut down by staffs like Houston. Their pitching staff, I'm not sure I feel as good about. I'm not super keen on what Garrett Cole has been able to do. Nestor Cortez might be like my number one option if I'm throwing somebody out there. He's been outside of judge the best story of uh the season for the yankees so yeah i'm a little more concerned about the pitching staff than i am the lineup but i feel good no matter who they're gonna they're gonna go up against this is a team that has the chance to beat anyone do they have the chance to lose to anyone sure but so does everyone else on the planet so we'll see what happens i think they're better positioned this year than they've been in a while Hmm. everyone has flaws i think heading in um the only one i see is the bullpen yeah, I mean they're I really they're really you know, dinged up on the in the bullpen. Holmes is hurt. They're probably trying to keep him healthy yep. for the playoffs. Rivera's not walking through the door. We know that. And mm-hmm. uh, Chapman is a shell of himself if nice. they even <laughs> give it to him. But I don't yep. think that if that's their only issue, uh, they're in pretty good shape, Sean. I, uh, they, if I were the Yankees, I'd look to take one of your extra starters and throw them in and try and make them a closer for the next mm-hmm. month. Yeah, uh, it's it's happened before and it's worked. Um, Right to the matchups, Tampa at Cleveland for three, Seattle at Toronto for three. I'm going to pick Cleveland. I'm going to pick Seattle because I've been on Seattle kind of all year. They're an exciting team. Toronto, we we all – I picked them to win the World Series at the start, and it just doesn't – it's just not adding up. Yeah, I think I would go – I think I'm with you on Seattle. I'm not as keen on Toronto as I was at the beginning of the season, but I'm going to take Tampa over Cleveland. All right. I love Cleveland, and we've talked a lot about them, but it's hard to pick against Tampa. I, I've watched them too much over the years, and Cash has developed, other than the Snell thing, just a remarkable story. I just hope someday they become the Montreal X-Rays. Yeah. <laughs> I think the Rose Arena is Mr. October. I think he's going to be big for them. And if McClanahan is healthy, he's got the 200Ks. Watch out for Kluber. He could be their Charlie Morton if you will, the mm-hmm. veteran that's been there before and Kluber's pitch well in the playoffs. Tyler Glasnow is pitching for them today. Uh, okay. He's got three innings in him. He's back. He's not going to be Cy Young Glasnow anytime soon, but he may be a guy that they can utilize to pick up some big innings, especially coming out of that bullpen. So that that's an interesting one to watch. NL, Philly is too clear of Milwaukee with three to play. They're probably going to make it. They're one behind San Diego. If the playoffs were today, um, St. Louis and the Mets are well, they're going to be at home for their series. Do you see either Philly or San Diego pulling an upset there? Uh, I don't. Uh, I think the Mets are kind of floundering a little bit now, but they're they're a team built for the postseason with, with that pitching staff. Um, does Philly San Diego have a chance to, to knock somebody off here? I think Philadelphia has zero chance to knock anybody off. I, I don't like anything about that team really. Um, so yeah, I, I would give them no chance. San Diego isn't out of the realm of possibility, especially if they're going to get the Mets, if they end up getting the Mets. And they're a team that, like, listen, if you don't have, if the Jacob deGrom and Max Scherzer show doesn't show up the way that it did this past week, and some of that is on the offense, I understand that. You got to score. You're going to have to score three plus runs in the postseason to get a win. So some of that's on the offense. But the Mets aren't in the best spot heading into the playoffs. They're going to essentially lose the division to the Braves and now put themselves in a really difficult spot where they have to win against a team like San Diego, who we know how good they are. There are people who pick them to go to the World Series. Like, this is a team, exactly. This is a team that has a lot of talent. Um, I would be more surprised if Philadelphia upset someone than if San Diego upset the Mets. 
the, the telling stat, not just the, the pitching disasters, and especially I love Bassett, just like mm -hmm. Sean does, but the pitching over the weekend was not pretty. And they only had two extra base hits in Friday and Saturday's games. Yeah. These yeah. are the Mets that just can't offensively compete, I think, with San Diego. Manny, Manny has grown up. With the Padres, I think the Tati thing, the one positive, is that Manny became the captain, the leader, and he made some statements about it. They've rallied together around this. He's got his 30 hundred, of course. But I love their pitching staff on paper and on the mound. Darvish is pitching better than he ever did in Texas right now. Yeah. Musgrove, the two of them have 34 wins. Manea just has to come around. Sean, who, he's, who this Sean knows was great in Oakland, but uh, they, yeah, they're really he's falling. not great in San Diego. <laughs> But Snell is looking good with his power, yeah. too. I think San Diego is a sleeper team, and I think they have the deepest starting pitching. They may not have the one, two to matchups, yep. but you've got three or four guys that you could use like a closer, like you said, mm -hmm. because Mr. Hader wishes he was in Milwaukee, oh. or in middle relief to keep it close. I think they're dangerous. Hey, of the four teams that buys, the, the, the Houston garbage cans, the Yankees, the Dodgers, and, and presumably Atlanta, Two game lead with three to play. Who who's at bigger risk for getting dumped in the in the first round of the division series? Is this it is the gonna, Yankees, Ashley? Like you were I thinking feel like about? this is gonna hurt my heart. Okay. <laughs> you guys chew on that for 30 seconds, and I'm gonna tell you who's going out in the first round. It's yeah. the Dodgers. LA. See it. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you why. Look, you don't want to face anybody in that lineup. There's no weak spots. Their pitching staff alarms me. And, and you say that they've won 110 games. Bueller's out. I love Clayton Kershaw. He's one of my favorite pitchers all time to ever watch. He's just not the same guy in October. And Tony Gonsolin's supposedly coming back today, but he's coming off injury. Urias, Urias is solid. Tyler Anderson uh, sold on him, but that bullpen's a mess. They, they have they bullpen. Have, you know who they need? They need, oh, Mr. Jansen, who just got his 40th yeah. save. They need him. Kimbrell has got nothing left. He's gone. I agree. Their, their staff is – I'm not really sold on some of those guys. I think Urias is probably the best of that. They got 109 wins, which hasn't been done since 1909, my freshman college year. But I, I agree. I th I'm not saying the Dodgers are overrated, but they played 40-something games against Colorado and Atlanta. Okay? He's able to Atlanta, Atlanta though, this year. I, I'll say I, Atlanta. I Atlanta. Uh, no, not Atlanta, Arizona, <laughs> excuse me. But the Dodgers okay. pitching just does not match up. Their bullpen's a mess. I think they are very vulnerable, Ashley. Yeah, I'm just not willing to bet against the team that's going to end up with more than 110 wins in the regular season because that lineup can score eight to ten runs a game. Like it it, can. You it have can. they have the ability to cover a lot of blemishes, which I can, that's kind of where we're going is like there are definitely blemishes and it has to do – mostly with the pitching staff. I get that. Um, I just think a team like the Yankees has similar blemishes in terms of a pitching staff and a bullpen. I'm less willing to bet on the Yankees than I am on the Dodgers, I think, in this situation, only because of past performance. The, the Yankees of the past six years have underachieved in the postseason. The Dodgers have not, for the most part. They've at least achieved better than the Yankees have. So... Yeah, I, unfortunately, I think I would say it would be the Yankees. I hope it's not, but. Yeah. What, what about Atlanta, Ashley? Uh, you know, similar to last year, they struggled in the first half. They got it turned on. They just big sweep over the Mets. Probably going to win the division. Where are they? Because they're there's no flaws on that team. It doesn't look No, like I know. And we talk about pitching staffs. And that is a staff that if you told me, you know, three months ago, no Ian Anderson – but you're going to have, you know, Spencer Strider is going to be rookie of the year and Kyle Wright is going to win 30 games. Like, it, it, you know what I mean? Like those are two guys who at the beginning of the year, I don't think people would have said, oh yeah, these are the two guys that you're going to have be the best pitchers in the NL East. And they have been outside of DeGrom and Scherzer when they've been good, but they've been the biggest surprises, I think. And yeah, that lineup, you got Matt Olson and Dansby Swanson hitting home runs left and right. Oh, by the way, you have Ronald Acuna Jr. who's had a, a relatively yeah. quiet season but plays a yeah. great right field, and you can rely on him anytime. Austin Riley, like these are just names. They they are very similar to the Dodgers, I think, 
and what they can roll out in a lineup. One through nine, they can get you. You saw Travis Darno come up with a hit, bases loaded last night against the Mets. Even the guys who aren't great, like Darno, tend to come up clutch. I think their lineup is super dangerous, and their rotation is sneaky. Like, I know Kyle Wright's not sneaky anymore because he's won so many games this season, but at the beginning of the year, I don't know that many people knew who Kyle Wright was and what he had to bring to the table. So I love Atlanta specifically because I love what they're doing right now. Well, I, I love Atlanta because the manager is like Bobby Cox. They mm-hmm. love the guy. He paid his dues. It's it's really the Cardinals organization, very mm-hmm. similar to that. Uh, it's great to see Dansby Swanson do what he's doing, the, you know, the 25 and 100, because remember how many times he struggled. He yep. went up and down. He has just blossomed like a flower in the spring. And then Freed does not make mistakes. Playoff games are lost by mistakes by pitchers, okay? Mm-hmm. And here he is only giving up 12 homers all season, 2.41. I think they have a very sneaky staff, and I agree with you, Ashley. I think Atlanta, they're not going to surprise anybody this year, but uh, when they lock up a guy like an Austin Riley, most of the world doesn't know who he is. They sure do there. And now they're even selling out in Atlanta, which they never did. (laughs) Who, Ashley, uh, we're going to put you on the spot. Who's it going to be, World Series, and who's going to win it? I'm going to go Dodgers, Astros. Okay. And I'm going to pick the Dodgers because I can't pick the Astros to win anything. Neither can I. I respect that pick and the rationale. Eric. I'm going to stick with Toronto against L.A. I really am, and I'm going to give Toronto a little love and try to pick them because right now they are hot. We said Bichette was a five-tool star. Here he is, 43 doubles, 24-93. Teoscar Hernandez, the anchor of my fantasy team, has been on fire of late. I love five that. Goals, seven doubles in his last 12 games. I know they played a AAA Boston team that quit, but – I think their lineup is as dangerous as anybody, and I really like their staff because Manoa is a big boy. Alex is big. He's got 16 wins. Gosman is Gosman, Mm -hmm. the quiet 15-win good ERA guy every year. And Romano is tremendous in the pen, and I'm not even mentioning Barrios because you never know what you're going to get there. I really believe Toronto is playing exceptionally well, and I'll take the flyer from back in April and have them beat the Dodgers. All right. Yeah. Wow. Like Staying with his pick. Like, I, I think Houston's going. Verlander's back. It pains me because I, I dislike yeah. them so, so much. The garbage cans. But I think they're going to get there, and they're going to lose in the World Series again and finish my October, early November on a happy note, just like we're at today, Victory Monday, in case you forgot. I want to pick Atlanta to win the whole thing, but I'm going with the Mets. Woo! Wow! I love the Scherzer Degrom thing in October. I, I love it. And Diaz coming out, he's rebounded. He was great in Seattle, terrible, but he, he's gotten it together. Bullpens to me, or it's a constant theme for me bringing it up here today. I think the bullpen is is so crucial in October. And yeah, the Dodgers can score nine runs any single night, but you're facing the best of the best in October, November. You got to be able to win a game. Four three even five four. So I, I worry about the Dodger bullpen. I think it's going to kill them. And it's just a hunch with the Mets. I, I I think Atlanta right now is the best team, um, but it's just a hunch with the Mets. So uh, Mets over Houston. Recreate that eighty six NLCS. Uh, uh, <laughs> great, great seven gamer. Yeah. Super I will be the world. biggest. God, if that's the World Series, I'm not. Maybe my husband will understand, but he <laughs> thinks when I cheer for the Mets that it's like the most appalling thing I've ever done. I will be the biggest freaking Mets fan on the planet if it's Mets Astros. Yeah, no, I'll never root for Houston. I mean, yeah. Houston makes I, turns me into a Yankee fan when they. Yeah, play. I think, and I think he would understand just for that sole reason of like I can't root for the Astros, but I don't think he'd yeah. like me rooting for the Mets much. Okay. Well, I lost the Astros when they uh, no longer remained affiliated with our local uh, great mm. team called the Tri-City Valley Cats. So yep. I join the two of you with that love or lost love. I appreciate love. that. All right. Well, folks, it was fun getting the band back together. I appreciate it. Of course. We'll, we'll see you all. Good, good to see both of your faces and talk sports, obviously.
Man, we'll, we'll, Maybe the we'll next time we talk, Syracuse will be like seven, eight, and zero. That would be awesome. Hey, we'll 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 get back together uh, pretty soon here. You know what? I'm so bummed. Before you, I'm don't want to cut you off or yeah, make, me continue off. the podcast. But Syracuse gets a top. It's a top twenty five matchup in the dome this weekend, which hasn't happened in an eternity. I think they're. I think Cuse is number twenty two, and NC State is like thirteen or fifteen. I was hoping that game day would go to the dome. Get this. They've never been to Syracuse for a football game, game day. Never. It's been happening for 27 years. So you'd think like, oh, maybe 27 years ago, like they had, and then there was a huge window where nobody cared about Syracuse football, which I understand, but they're going to Kansas this weekend, which is cool. And I can appreciate that. Kansas is uh, one of the best stories in college football. Kansas also has not had game day there. So at least they're checking that one off the list. But Syracuse is now one of seven schools that has never had game day there for football. Our our producer, Gaz, uh, spoke about this before before you guys came in. I was talking to him. He's like, you got to ask Ashley because, yeah, same as you just said, I get, I guess why they're going to Lawrence, Kansas. That's fine. Yeah. But what a great weekend it would have been. So I know. Well, and then the problem is like if Cuse loses a game or two, well, now the whole season's shot because they're not going to come. They won't come back anyway. But I did think like, well, if they beat NC State or they were to cr- somehow beat Clemson, maybe they come for the Notre Dame game. Who knows? Anyway, yeah, do, just a pipe dream. I do want to say uh, also bye to Dennis Eckersley, who is wrapping up his Yay. broadcasting career in Boston. 50 years in the sport, player and, uh, of course, Hall of Famer and, uh, very much in Sean's heart for uh, his work as a closer, uh, but he was a great broadcaster in Boston. He's going to retire and play granddad him. in California. So to Eck, who calls about a pair of shoes and cheese and all that great stuff, we're going to miss you, Eck, and we thank you for a tremendous career of 50 years of service in baseball. Kovacic's retiring today. 50 years of service Today's in the weather. Day? Wow. Today, last day, Mr. Bob Kovacic. The chief yeah, I, when I moved to New York in 77, actually, believe it or not, that was, yeah, 77, uh, Kovacic was was on the air at Channel 10 with uh, Dick Wood and Rip Rowan. So Unbelievable. That's a pretty good run. Yeah, no doubt. He's had it better than most. He's a legend. All right, and Ashley, great seeing the, the jockey back there in the back corner. Oh. Otherwise, I'll still haven't forward, gotten this right. I'll look forward to seeing your Christmas tree in March. Oh, perfect. Thanks. I'll be back on for that. Thanks for the All reunion. Right. It was better than the Friends reunion, you three. All right. Yeah. yeah. Bye, we'll guys. guys. Bye now. All righty. Bye, Ash. <laughs> that was awesome. All right. Let's continue the awesomeness. Josh Jacobs was hungry yesterday. The dude ate and ate and ate, and I loved it. Good to see the Raiders finally get a win. Yeah, it was weighing on me a little bit. You know, there's still, but there's still room to improve, right? Josh McDaniels was supposed to come in and fix the red zone issues. <clears throat> Too many field goals yesterday. That game should should have been put away. With, with eight to ten minutes to go in the fourth quarter, should have been over. Now they weren't threatened in the last couple of minutes because the defense just was phenomenal all day. But um, you've got to get touchdowns in the NFL. Feel as Carlson's automatic. He missed an extra point yesterday. First kick ever he missed. At Allegiant Stadium, but a win's a win. I'm not complaining. But you know, Darren Waller, he is out of sync, and he is he is playing like a guy that didn't have training camp, didn't which he didn't didn't have any practice, no preseason games for most of the starters. But he, hopefully, you get it going. You got a big one at Kansas City next Monday night. So we're one and three, not where we want to be. Chiefs are three and one and looked awesome last night. It, it pained me rooting for Tom Brady. But, at least he embarrassed himself. We're not embarrassed himself. We played like garbage. So, and they so did they. So, you know, I hate Tampa too, but that was good. But anyway, the good news: Jacobs phenomenal yesterday, and he he was he was a workhorse yesterday. And, and if they can keep that going and get the good split between running and passing, it just makes the offense so much better. Hopefully, third and run pro gets back soon. The other thing that really stood out yesterday on offense. Derek Carr used his legs, and 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 you need to see that. You got to have that at least ability to tuck the ball and go to pick up a big first down. I think too often in the last couple of years he might have been reluctant to do it, um, and will force a throw. But but I'm glad to see him on the move because it just adds another dimension. He's no Lamar Jackson. He's not even close. He's closer to me. Oh, no, I can't say that. But anyway, but you got to be able to good to see that. But the defense yesterday was phenomenal. Max Crosby was good. Um, 
Denzel Perrin before he left the game was all over the field. You see where he was missed those games. He he was out. Uh, and Amik Robertson's had a, a, a tough couple of years. He's he's stuck with it. He's still gets some reps. But good to see him get that fumble uh, recovery from. Thank you to Melvin Gordon for uh, giving us that one and, and taking it to the house for for a big defensive score. So a lot to like for the Raiders. I and mean, you know what? One play away from winning three games doesn't mean a thing because you lost them all. But we're one and three where we deserve to be. But if we can build off this momentum, head to Kansas City next week and, and try and try and grab a big win over them, that would just be phenomenal. So but to have a victory Monday, you need a Raider win on Sunday. But you also need a Husker win on Saturday, Friday this week against Rutgers. Uh, way too many penalties, but the defense really tightened it up in the second half. You can, I've been on Eric Chin Anders ass for a few weeks. I wasn't upset that he was fired. Or no, I wasn't upset at all that he was fired. He deserved to be fired. And and the defense had a little different look to it the other night under Coach Bush. I I thought with Janander, they looked out of position too many plays, but the other night they were they were great, and they played with a lot of emotion. The, the kids have been through a lot of stuff. You know, you lose your coach, um, then you lose your defensive coach, and you keep losing games. Um, but they they really, really battled. You know, the offense uh, offense gave up a score. Chubba Purdy came in uh, for a series and got sacked and fumbled the end zone. But you know what? It wasn't that long ago that that would have been uh, a disaster in a game that you were winning, but not this time. The special teams came back, got the lift, they blocked the punt, and took it to the house for a big score. And like I said, in the second uh, game was tied, fourth quarter, and and there were the Huskers outscoring Indiana 14 to zip to to close it out. So it was a big win. Indiana came in three and one. That's nice, but any conference win is is big. And now you got to build on that Friday at Rutgers, and lo and behold, the Big Ten West stinks. Right? It stinks. You could still win this division, believe it or not. Um, quick thing on the Big Ten West: uh, Wisconsin fires Paul Chris yesterday. To me, that's just they're packing it in. This guy's 60, 67, and twenty-six. I think he was a game better than Bo Pelini during his time at Nebraska when he got fired. Um, just what a what a crappy kind of move or what message does this send? You know, a lot of Husker fans are compared to when Frank Solich got shown the door uh, after a nine one year. I really think that they looked at it and said they're not very good this year. And they have Jim Leonard, their defensive coordinator, who is, shows up on every list of available college head coaching candidates. <clears throat> Played at Wisconsin. It felt like he was there 20 years. Um, he, he was a great, great defensive player, made plays all over the field. Um, he would have been a hot ticket in the offseason. He still may be. Um, but he's also a Wisconsin guy. Give him the job now. And and I think it's an attempt to hold on to Jim Leonard under the staff um, beyond this year and going in the future. I think if they were, if Chris was ever going to retire, Leonard would have been the obvious choice to take it. And now they're kind of forcing that. And, and maybe you play on the, the hunch that he may never leave. And there's Wisconsin's where he'd want to be, and it makes sense. He's been there a long, long time. So interesting to see Wisconsin do that uh, at this stage of the year. And the D1 coaches are falling by the week. You know, Frost and, and Herm Edwards and Chris and then Georgia Tech, a big win after they fired their coach too. So um, hopefully the trend doesn't continue. It just seems a little knee-jerk to be doing it during the season, but it is what it is. Not for the really crappy part. I mean – Tua, I mean, I, I was stunned watching that game. It was a national TV game Thursday night on Amazon Prime, and there's a guy out there who had some issues coming off that Buffalo game a week ago uh, yesterday, and the, the question is, should it be out there? And the answer was no. And, and the NFL and their protocol system failed miserably, and they failed Tua, Tua Vailoa, <clears throat> and who knows what, you know, hopefully he gets back quick. He's, he's having a nice year. He's pairing up great with Tyreek Hill and, and Jalen Waddle, and hopefully he gets back. But that was, that's just an awful look. It's, it's on your, your marquee Thursday night game. Um, big matchup, Miami and Cincinnati. That's a, it's a great matchup. And then this happens, and he's down for 10 minutes going off on a stretcher. It's the NFL's worst nightmare coming true. And the neurologist who helped clear Tua to, to play was fired. The independent um, 
was let go, as he should have been, because somebody failed, and someone's got to take a dive here. But it would be interesting. I don't know how much longer. I think this this isn't going to go away is my expectation. And as great as Mike McDaniel appears to be for Miami, you know, 3-0 start, first time since Jimmy Johnson did that before their, their loss the other night. To what account is somebody going to be held for this? Because they had they had to know Tua wasn't one hundred percent. Don't you can you can go out in front of the press and give me the. I would never let that happen to happen to any of my players, and their their safety and health is first. And you want to believe that, but ultimately he's the head coach, and he's the one that uh, sent Tua out there. So <clears throat> I don't know. Do you do you fire a hot young coaching uh, hire that you just made that won his first three games? It's just terrible. I I don't know how I feel about that, but just a just a horrible horrible look for for the NFL, for the Miami Dolphins, and, and everybody. So hopefully Tua will get back here pretty quick and uh, uh, resume his career. Resume his season he's had until pretty much. Nice well, on that note, folks, boy, it was fun with Eric and Ashley. We had a great time on him and them across the board. Uh, it's great team in both of us today. So the baseball playoff. On the horizon, NFL coming up this week. And uh, for me, uh, the beginning of the college hockey division one season is upon us. I was at Union College for uh, the practice uh, media day, starting up practice media day last week, and RPI's got a home weekend series coming up with Mercyhurst, so uh, hopefully we'll be catching that one. On that note, we will see you all next week, next time. Have a wonderful day and a great week.